It's men's singles and it features the number one and two seeds. Cho Tian Chen of Chinese Taipei trying to make history today because no player from his country has ever won the men's singles final here. He's up against Victor Axelson, the number two seed, beaten finalist a year ago. Well, this is the race to Guangzhou and the top three on that list have each won a title during the qual qualifying period. In fact, four of the top five and five of the top eight have uh, contested a final uh, during that period. Well, Victor Axelson will consolidate his place at number one and Wang Suwei, he'll stay at number two. But Shi Wu Qi, who reached the quarterfinal here, he'll move up to number three. I can tell you that Chou Tian Chen, obviously not on that list, is way down at number 34 at the moment. Well, when we look at the men's singles uh, draw, well, there's only four different nationalities because there were three Danes, two players from Chinese Taipei and two from China at the quarterfinal stage. All four quarterfinals were won in two straight games, which is very unusual indeed. Uh, by semi-final stage, Victor Axelson was the only player who had contested an all-England final. Of course, he's a former world number one and former a world champion. So for the sixth time, we have number one against number two seed at the uh, All England in the men's singles final since the inception of the Super Series in 2007. This is the Yonex All England Open Badminton Championships 2020 men's singles final. Let's welcome the players. First up, the number one seed from Chinese Taipei, Chao Tian Chen. Chao Tian Chen making history today and hoping to make even bigger history because he is the first man from his country ever to contest the All England final. He's the first man male player from his country in any discipline in an All England final. And let's have a massive reception for his opponent, the number two seed from Denmark, Victor Axelsen! the former world number one, the former world champion, a beaten finalist a year ago when he lost to Kento Momota in three thrilling games. Will it be the tall Danes year? Will he become the first Danish men's singles winner for 21 years since Peter Gader lifted the title in 1999? So this will be a 12th meeting between these two players. And as you can see, Victor Axelsen has an overwhelming advantage over the previous 11 encounters. But the last time they met, which was the group stage of the World Tour Finals last year, it was Cho Tian Chen who won. Chao. Black this or red? Also, yeah. red the second meeting in a final. The first was in this India in 2017. Uh, so, Cho Tian Chen has won the toss and chosen side. So, this obviously a huge opportunity for both these players. As we have to mention that we spare a thought for last year's champion, Kento Momota, unable to come to the All England and defend his title after being involved in a horrific car accident. But Cho Tian Chen and Victor Axelson will both be helping to capitalise on the Japanese players' misfortune. Cho Tian Chen is 30 years of age, enjoying his 32nd consecutive week as world number two. He was the Asian Games silver medalist a couple of years ago in Jakarta. It's his ninth consecutive All England Championships. He was a semi-finalist here three years ago. Uh, but for him, this is a huge occasion.
and he played in the first round, Mark Calio, who was promoted from the reserves. He then had to save a match point against Kanta Suniyama in the second round, and then played against his teammate Wang Suwei in the quarterfinal. And tragically, in the semi-final, the number five seed, the World Championship silver medalist, Anna's Antonsen, had to retire after badly spraining his ankle at 14-17. So it was, in fact, Chao Chow Tian Chen who was leading that semi-final. Victor Axelsson is 28 years of age from Odense, which is where we played the Denmark Open. Went down two places in the world ranking this week to number seven, but. It, he did spend a total of 51 weeks as a world number one. This is his eighth appearance at the All England Championships. And he had a tough battle yesterday in the semi-final, having cruised through the first three matches, including the quarter-final against the number seven seed, Chiu Chi, who won the title in 2018 in the final of the year prior to that. Against Li Zia, it was 21-19 in the deciding game, but at 19 all, Li Zia was faulted for hitting the shuttle before it had crossed over the net on a net kill. And uh, that obviously gave the day the match point opportunity. Gavin Smith from England is our umpire and our service judge from the Netherlands. So given the head-to-head, -head, uh, Morton, Victor Axelsson has to be the favourite, surely? Uh, according to the head-to-head, -head, yes, <laughs> clearly, clearly, 9-2 up. Um, but you rightly mentioned he lost the last one when they played at the World Tour Final. Sir Cho Chen Chen won it, so I think that's an indication. Plus, one half to take into account. It was a tough, tough match against Li Si Cha yesterday for yes. Big Texas, and where, on the other hand, Cho Chen Chen played, what, 25 minutes yeah. against uh, Anas, and then that was it. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Good point. on my right, Victor Axelsen, Denmark. Yeah. On my left, Cho Chen Chen, Chinese Taipei. Victor Axelsson to serve, the ball, player. So the former world champion, Victor Axelsson, number two seed, far side of the court against Cho Tien Chen. And that's just wide. And we ought to make mention that today Whoa. is Victor Axelsson's 30th career final. It was actually his third final at Super 1000 level, but he's still looking for his first Super 1000 title. And now when you mention it, uh, you mentioned that he was 28 years of age, he's just 26 years I of age. I do beg you pardon, yeah. It's just a formality, don't worry about that. But I must say that uh, whenever I've seen uh, Victor and Cho Chen Chen play, it Two looks like that Victor has really got Cho's number. You know what, what I mean? He just feels comfortable when he's playing him. And of course, the head to head 9 2 up is showing that. Yeah. Oh, just well on. I would suggest the drift that you were talking about. Shuttle flying faster coming towards Jorty and Chen's end of the court at the moment. Yeah, it's hard to tell. Yeah, it is. Now it's good follow up by Jorty and Chen. Yeah, but you can only follow up because the attacking shot, the smash was really awesome. The jumping smash, then down the line, making sure that Axison cannot really get it cross court, and uh, that makes it so much easier to anticipate. Yeah, well, done. well, before we really get into the match, Morton, a couple of fun facts: the last player in two consecutive finals, as I was mentioning 
in the introduction was Shi Yu Chi, mm. beaten in the final 2017 and 2018. And the last Dane in two consecutive finals was... Hmm. It could have been me. No, it was Paul Eric Hoyer. Oh, yeah, mid-90s. Yeah. Yeah, 95 and 96, I think it was. Lovely, lovely smash from Victor Axelsen. And the last player to lose two consecutive men's singles finals was Lee Chong Wei. In 2012, lost to Lin Dan. 2013, Chen Long. So just close your eye, your ears for a moment. I will. Because I will. the last Dane to lose <laughs> two in a row. <laughs> in two <laughs> was in me. Row. Was you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. 18, 88, 89. It was. Yes. Sorry, Morton. No, no, that's fair. I can take it. Don't worry. Oh, that's landed in. Yeah, that's, that's, in. A, that's a lovely shot. Just inside the line. So, Morton, my fun fact of the day. Yes. Yep. Yes. And I'm repeating it from the other day because <laughs> one of my colleagues missed it. So I'm going to repeat it. Okay. The number one seed at the All England in the men's singles has now contested 12 of the last 14 men's singles finals here ever since the oh. inception of the Super Series and now World Tour. That's amazing, isn't it? Six, it is. Three. That's unusual. 12 out of 14. He's the 12th out of the last 14. Yeah, that's good. Oh, Victor Axelsen very, very lucky to get away with it there. Once again, we had a glimpse Seven, of the problems that he's having on his low serve. And is all that nerves, do you think, on his low serve? You know, I, of course, it's a, a bit of a joke, but it, it's a little bit like uh, cervitis, as I would call it. Yeah. Uh, inflammation of the serve. Mm. And it's, it's just, you know, whatever he's doing, uh, it's just very tricky. Yeah. And uh, the further up the court his opponent is standing, the closer he is to the line the more difficult Axelsen finds it to so serve low. Service over, four, seven. And we also saw it towards the end of the match yesterday that he was a lot in trouble when it came to serving towards the end because he was getting quite tight, quite nervous. Oh, it's that's out. gone long. Yeah, it's out. Well, it's a golden opportunity for Victor Axelsen. Five, seven. Ten. Victor, Victor. Lovely man, Chorty and Chen, which was emphasised yesterday when he made a statement to the press thanking the Onyx All England organisers. And he said this virus outbreak is a big situation and yet the people are still coming to see us. So we need to show great thanks to the fans, staff and coaches for keeping the All England going. The first challenge of this men's singles final. Let's call in. I think that uh, Cho Chen Chen is having a case here, but it's mighty close. Challenge remaining. 
service over. Eight, five. Player. And long by March. Nine five. Oh, that's landed in. Challenge, challenge now Axelson, from Victor Axelson. Out. Axelson is really trying to add on the pace and pressure here, trying to score quick points. Put uh, Zhou Chen Chen on the, a lot of pressure. They have a call challenge and successful. They both one have just remaining. one challenge left now in this opening game. Service it's over. very, very Six, tough to call ten. a challenge on the opposite yeah. back line. Victor Axelson has a five point advantage at the mid game interval. They have four by in the skin. Yeah, big to begin with a store on the Good and a beam of being a good show. Yeah, good man. Yes, like from the beam. This is David Hell. Good sitting in the middle. It's the last so did you manage to catch any of that Morton it's it's really interesting I know it's uh, very easy for me to say in hindsight here but I was just about saying before they went into the interval that I sense that Victor is attacking straight the whole time. He doesn't like to open up the court, but he's going for straight smashes on the forehand side and straight smashes on the backhand side. And in the interval, they were talking about keep it straight when you're attacking. And uh, it's a definite uh, part of the strategy. And of course, as usual, stand up quite far on the court, get close to the net, try to take the control. Yeah, but that's quite normal. Put that away with Venom. That one is going to come back. Service over. But I must say well, to me that uh, I, so far I think Zhou Chen Chen has played too passively. He's just uh, reacting to whatever Axis and this throwing at him. He's not really going in there controlling it. And I, I really need to see that from him. Oh, wow. There's another excellent smash from the tall man. Six foot four. Where when uh, Li Xijia from Malaysia played the semi-final yesterday against Axis and he was much more taking the game to Axis and he was attacking him, he was really working him. 13, and uh, so seven. far, Zhou Chen Chen is it's just too passive. Yeah. Just a half smash from Axelson. 
14 7. on your point, Orton, don't you think that far too often, it's not just 15, this match, seven. far too often I feel that Chotian Chen is too passive. He's, uh, you can see he's a very fit athlete, very physically strong as well, and I think that he, he enjoys the running style, but I think too often he's too passive and doesn't take enough initiative within the rallies and the matches. Yes, I, I usually call him the master of three games because he's having this strong tendency to, 16, I wouldn't seven. say throw away one game, but, you know, not really put everything into it and focus from the beginning. Or in, we've seen other tournaments where he's going all in in the first and throw in the second game and then go all in in the third again. Mm. So it's, it's like there's a lapse of concentration. Yeah. String's gone. gone. Yes, string gone. Good guess. Yeah. Could you imagine that shot had gone over? <laughs> <laughs> Service over. <laughs> Eight, sixteen. Side edge of the line. Yeah. So too is that. Well in. I seriously asked Steen yesterday evening whether he thought the lengthways drifters had changed. Now there's two leaves there from Chorty and Chen. He thinks that he's playing against the drift. Oof. Well, that's better from Chorty and Chen. More aggressive. Yeah, it's it's not conclusive Nine. that uh, drift. I don't think there's a conclusive evidence on on it. Um, I think the players are controlling it quite nicely. Yes, now and again they throw one out on on the back line, but to say that that's due to a drift, I think they're pretty good controlling it. But there's no doubt that uh, Joe Chen Chen has given up in this uh, opening game and is uh, waiting to put everything into the second. Yeah. That happened quite a while ago. But the problem for, for Cho is that that is taking the physical edge and advantage away from him because that means that Vic Taxison only need to have physical ability Clear. for for two games because this opening game has not been physical no. at all no. at all and that uh, sort of equalized the uh, the tough match that axis had yesterday i would say oh i thought that was going wide
Great. Oh! He got it. Victor Axelsen put his racket up. And the attempted kill from Cho Tien Chen hit Axelsen's racket and the shuttle just bounced over. It happens so often. Victor is doing this very, very often. It's all perfectly legal. Yeah, as long as he's doing it on his own side. Yeah. And not interfering with the shot. So it's game point opportunities. Over. He's got plenty of room. 11, yeah. Another nine 20. to go. It's just a formality. Oh. Uh, that was a good defensive block from Toti and Chen. 12-20. Yeah, got the net caught. It was a beauty. And once again, we see Axis and Let. attempting to block the shot. You both must be ready. Oh, you cutties. Oh. Oh. Challenge, challenge. challenge called out. He might have just clipped the line there. It's close. Mm. Yeah, there you go. Direction. Jill's back in form on the Hawkeye challenges. <laughs> back in form. I like that. It's good to hear, Jill. Yeah. Steen said he was barking it down in his diary that I got one right yesterday. <laughs> He, he was tough on you. Yeah, good night shot. Oh, well, I thought that one was wide. That one was called in. Yeah, I think it's wide. I think it's game point. Game over. And it was wide, and therefore on his fourth game point opportunity. Victor Axelsen takes the opening game against Cho Tien Chen, 21-13 in 20 minutes of play. In Det står han og venter med mindre, jeg er rigtig god position, ikke? Ja, men mindre du er klar til at løbe den op, ja. og, og så er der i god position. Ja. Okay. Kom for den, klar og skift. Ja. Skal vi lige ud i stor tålmodighed? Ja, helt godt. 
Og der er langt hjem til Tobi. Så So lots of advice from Kenneth Jonasson, Danish men's singles coach, head coach for Victor Axelsson. Second game. Chun Chen doesn't have a coach. He has his physio, Victoria Cow, on his coaching bench. Morton, did you? Were you able to hear what was being said? Yeah, as you rightly say, it was a long talk, um, mostly re reiterating uh, what they have been discussing before the match, that's for sure. It was the same, we have to do the same on this, we have to do the same on that. But one thing I really took notice of was the fact that they said, be patient and be prepared, be mentally prepared, because they expect a tough fight back here from Chou Chin Chin. Yeah. Service over, 2-1. Hey, you can tell already. Boss that was a good smash. But prior to that final smash from Axelson, it was uh, a different pace and a different sense of urgency from Cho Tian Chen. Uh, he's, he's already a lot more on the oh. attack. But this is perfect placement from Axison on the right side of the body. So difficult to defend. Oh. But already twice now. In the second game, Axis and have three, had a two. really, really bad low surf already twice. Yeah. Service over, three, all. Well, I'm not quite sure what the umpire is warning Victor about. Was that because he... He was shouting towards his opponent. OK. And we will see it more and more often. Oh, At the moment, the, I think the clear difference between the two players is that Cho Chen Chen is not scoring. He had two smashes in this rally. He, he didn't dent the defence at all from Axison. Mm. And every time Axison goes on the attack, he's almost scoring. Yeah. And that's the big difference. At the moment, Axison can, can score, and Cho Chen Chen is not able to do so. Yeah, there's another one. And uh, he's got the swagger, hasn't he? The former world champion. He, he looks confident. He is confident at the Six. moment. There's no Three. doubt. He is... 
he's all over Cho Chen Chen as a rash, as you say. He's all over the place. He's really building upon it. Well, it's called good. Axelson is challenging. Shall I go for it again? I thought it was in. OK. <laughs> um, but I think you're right. I think it's uh, a wasted challenge. Yeah. Challenge and successful. Well done, Jill. Yeah. Challenge remaining. You are definitely back on form. <laughs> Got my right Four glasses on today, that's why. <laughs> Five days of practice. Another example of because Chu Tian Chen tried attacking, and in fact Five, he relied six. on Axelson making an error in the end rather than him hitting a winner. See, not even those two, not the smash from a favourable position or the follow-up. He was able to penetrate the defence. And it's definitely playing on his mind, making s mistakes that we rarely see Cho Chen Chen is making. Yeah. There's some frustration there. It's gone long. Yeah, the defence of the Dane at the moment is... Absolutely rock solid. This is one of the first outright winners from Cho Chen Chen. Yeah. And it's delighted, Victoria Cow. <laughs> I was just about saying, as usual, she is very, very animated behind the court. to start finding the lines pretty soon, Cho Tian Chen. Otherwise, it's going to be too late for him. Oh, that's a good shot. Yes, much, much more sting into that smash from Cho Tian Chen. It's many. I haven't yeah. counted them, but it's no. really a lot. Exactly. Well, I think that Cho Chen Chen has got 
something right in the sense that when he's attacking, he's attacking the forehand side of Axis. And I had the privilege of uh, commentating on uh, the match against uh, Laksha Sen that uh, Axis played in the second round. And Sen got a lot of smashes down to the forehand side. And yesterday, Lisi Chad did the same. Yeah. It's only 11 7 in the second game, having won the first. Anything different on the advice there, Morton? Uh, not really, but a little bit. Perhaps they uh, want to utilise the, the sideways drift a bit and, and play towards the forehand side of, um, of Cho Chen Chen over there. Use the drift on that side and then everything else is the same. There's another body smash, not quite at the body, but certainly not down the sides of the court. Yeah, it, I, I must say it looks like one-way traffic. I, I find it hard to see how Cho Chen Chen can fight back. He's showing no signs of urgency. He's showing no signs to say, OK, I'm going to do this. seen one or two signs of urgency but I, I just don't think he has the capability because the defense of Victor Axelson today has been so good yeah but the problem is that Zhou Chen Chen's attack is a one-shot attack he's yeah. going for one shot there's a follow-up but the follow-up is not so strong that means that Axelson just have to defend the first one yeah good point he's got to be much much more persistent as and when he's getting the attack Stop. And that's certainly not helping his cause. Good flick. It's going wide. Yeah. This is one-way traffic. Yeah. 14, eight. Six point advantage. Now on ever one senses for Chu Chien Chen. That's very well judged. Where was the attack once again? Straight at the body. It definitely looks like Cho Chen Chen is not having the self-belief when he's playing with big taxes and he simply can't find the answers. Perhaps a little bit like when uh, Axison is playing Momota. We've seen so often that uh, yes. Axison can't find the answers and showing complete frustration. Possibly the best consistent 
rally from Cho Chen Chen in this match. He really upped the pace. He was putting Axis and under pressure the whole time in terms of pressure and pace and moving him. And that was possibly, as I say, the most consistent pressure we've seen this match so far. Yeah. Committed coming forward there, Axelson. Yeah, he does that sometimes, taking 11, the chance. 15. But he was well spotted. Yeah, well in. Axelson begs to differ. If he's wrong on this, he's got no challenges left. Your feelings on this one? I think it's in. Yeah. Challenge unsuccessful. So he's no got no challenges left today. And that's a tricky situation. 12, 15. And it's definitely within grasp now for Cho Chen Chen. Three yeah. points, it's within possible. Yeah. It's played well the last uh, three, four, five points, I think. an important point for both players. Service over. 13-15, or as it is, 16-12. Yeah, it's a massive difference. Yes, yeah. Psychologically, more than anything. Chosen to go back on the attack. And it's paid off the last two points. away Victor Axelson from ending uh, a 21 year wait before a Dane to win the men's singles title here at the All England Championships. Oh, good. 
Service over. 13, 18. Stay on. Yeah, plumb on the line. Wise by Chelsea Chen to take that one. Yeah, good rally. He knows it's now or never. a challenge from Chiu Tian Chen, but I fear he might lose that challenge. Yeah, I think it's out. I thought I heard some heavy breathing in that rally. Did they you were hear working that too? Hard. Yeah, did you hear that too? I was thinking the same. Victor. Yeah. Challenge unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. Two points away from the title, 19, Victor Axelson. Uh, it looks like a very comfortable win for Axelson in an All England final here. Yeah. Wow, what a way to bring up match point opportunities. And he's been outstanding today, as Victor Axelson. Yeah, Cho Chen, Chen has not been able to put him under pressure. That's gone long, yeah. and the 21-year wait is over. The man who a year ago was beaten in the final by Kento Momota. Victor Axelson this year goes one better. The champion of the Onyx All England Open. Danish fans celebrate. Well, he was absolutely superb today. Throws his shirt to a lucky fan, and for Victor Axelsen, it's not only a first All England title, it's a first Super 1000 title when playing in his third Super 1000 final. So confirmation of the score, 21-13, 21-14 in a match lasting 45 minutes. Well, I know Danes especially regard this tournament as the annual event that they want to win. He's now won the world title, he's medalled at the Olympics, and now he has won an All England title as well. An incredible achievement.
for the 26-year-old from Onza. So uh, let's have a word with the champion, with our Master of Ceremonies, Howard Bentham. Let's get a word with the men's singles champion, and now he's got dressed. Victor Axelson, ladies and gentlemen. Victor, you're the first Danish men's singles champion since 1999. Peter Garda uh, won here all those years ago. Uh, I've not, I don't think I've seen you quite so emotional as well. That really meant something, didn't it? Oh, yeah, I'm, a, I'm an emotional guy. Um, but, you know, if you aren't, uh, you know, happy and uh, getting cheered up, uh, winning all England here in front of this amazing crowd, then you're not a human. So uh, I'm uh, so, so proud and so happy. It's a dream coming true. Tell us about the tactics. Uh, your opponent's had an amazing week. He's been so strong. You dominated the match. Tell us how. Uh, I don't know. Um, I think I felt uh, good coming into the match and, you know, getting a good start is pretty important in here, um, especially in the final, um, where nerves can, can play a big part of a game. So I was controlling that a bit and had good legs. And, um, yeah, I don't know what to say. Well, it was a very impressive performance. I'm sure your aim this year is to turn that uh, Rio bronze into Tokyo gold, but obviously with the global situation, it's going to be a, a very different run-in now to the Games. So your thoughts on that? Can I just enjoy this win for now, and then we continue? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's still a long way to go to the Olympics, so let's celebrate first. <laughs> let's, uh, let's hear a quick word to the fans, amazing fans you've got here. Yes, um, in English first, thank you so much for all the support this week, both here in the arena and on social media. Rahona Wachang, Ken Wasoyo, the Jungo, the Chomi Man Shua, Sese, Toy Water Church, Fesha Kansia, Sese. Victor Axelson, ladies and gentlemen, the men's singles champion. And very well said by Victor Axelson, thanking his fans both in English and in Mandarin. He has a huge following in China and he's absolutely fluent in Mandarin. Also very well said so that he wants to enjoy the moment instead of talking about obviously the concerns and the worries globally and rightly so. He has dreamed of this moment uh, since he was a young man, ever since probably he picked up a badminton racket and this a wonderful achievement for Victor Rapsison playing in his 30th career final today. He wins uh, the biggest of the World Tour events, his first Super 1000 title. And of all the 1000s, the All England Championships, the oldest and most prestigious international annual event in the world of badminton. He really was uh, dominant throughout. He has the right game plan against Cho Tien Chen. But Cho Tien Chen today making history as the first male player from Chinese Taipei ever to contest an All England final. And he should be mighty proud about that. But today, he just couldn't find the answers to the superb form of Victor Axelson. Well, one sense right from the start that he was going to win. He just had that look and that look of confidence. Yeah, um, as we mentioned earlier, I, I don't think that Cho Chen Chen really managed to mount enough pressure on Axis in the whole match. It was just uh, a little bit here and a little bit there, but not really coherent, and he paid the price for that. Ladies and gentlemen, the victory ceremony for the Yonex All England Open Badminton Championships 2020 men's singles. Presentations will be made by the presidents of Yonex, 
Kasaki Hayashida and the president of the Badminton World Federation, Paul Eric Hoya. The Yonex All England Men Singles runner-up for 2020 from Chinese Taipei, Zhao Tianxian. Well, it's a tournament that he will remember for a long, long time. Chou Tian Chen of Chinese Taipei. Let's hear it one more time for our runner-up, Chou Tian Chen, ladies and gentlemen. And let's give it up for our gold medalist, the 2020 Yonex All England Open Badminton Championship men's singles winner from Denmark, Victor Axelsen. Victor Axelsen goes one better than a year ago here at the 2020 Yonex All England. He wins the title. 21 years after the last man from Denmark won this prestigious event. The magnificent Paul trophy. Paul will now hand over the trophy. And the Paul and Eric Hoyer, the, the president singles, of the BWF, won twice Axelson. himself. And Victor Axelson adds his name to the list of great Danish men's singles players who have won this title. have entertained us royally, the top two seeds in the competition. Putting on a fabulous men's singles final. Thanks again to Kusaki Hayashida, president of Yonex, and the president of the Badminton World Federation, Paul Eric Hoya. Winner here, of course, in the 90s. And so as he leaves centre stage, we look forward to the remaining uh, finals. And the next one is mixed doubles. Puavara Nukro and Teira Tanachai, the World Championship silver medalists, are up against Praveen Jordan and Milati Daiva Octavianti. <laughs> 